of awakening, what will help us to awaken the church from this latter day lukewarmness, the danger of lukewarmness as we've studied. If you turn your Bible back to our subject, our text, in Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3 from verse 14. Certain things come out very clearly. And we have a responsibility, every one of us, starting from yourself. You check up yourself, examine yourself, weigh yourself in the light of what we have studied, what we've looked at, the word of God, and what the Lord Jesus Christ mentioned about these people. You discover this is the last letter to the last church that was written to by the Lord Jesus Christ at that time. And uh, of all of them, even the others that were bad, there were certain things the Lord had to commend these people, these other ones on. But this particular one, the church in Laodicea, there was nothing to commend at all. Not a single thing. So if you like, it's a church that was dead spiritually. Although called a church, but dead. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. And unto the angel of the church in Laodicea write, These things said the amen, and the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Now, what he addressed them with also shows us exactly what was their problem. One, he said, I am the amen, thy finality, the confirmation of God. The things that are said, when you say amen, you are saying, so let it be. He said, I've been from the beginning. And not only that, he called himself faithful. And that was what was lacking in the lives of these people. They were very unfaithful. Unfaithful to God in their dealings with one another also. Unfaithfulness was found there. So he had to address these issues. He said, I'm the one who is the true witness. And uh, he now began to explain to them, I'm the beginning of the creation of God. That, that's not to say he is created, but that he is the originator. Is the one who began the creation. Nothing was made without him. If you go to John's Gospel, chapter uh, 1, it tells you that Jesus Christ himself, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and nothing was made without him in that particular chapter. So he addressed himself. After addressing himself, look at the next thing that followed. I know thy works. And thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Actually, what he used here to talk to them, this issue of lukewarmness. The city of Laodicea was just about, I think about 10 miles from Colosse. And they got their water from Colosse, so it will flow through a pipe. By the time it will arrive at Philadelphia, there, by, I mean Laodicea, by the time it will arrive, Laodicea is not hot, it's not cold. You cannot use it to make tea because it's not hot enough. You can't also be refreshed by drinking it as cold water because it's lukewarm. So that's exactly what they themselves understood when the Lord was telling them, I will spill thee out of my mouth. Now, you think of a situation where the weather is hot and you want to drink water and the water is lukewarm. It's not, you cannot drink it, use it to make tea. 
You can't also be refreshed by drinking it as, as cold water. That's what he was telling them. So you put it in your mouth, especially if you put it in the mouth of a child, the child will spew it out. That's exactly what Jesus Christ was telling them. I will spew thee out of my mouth because you are lukewarm. And because you are lukewarm, he said, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Now, what was the cause of this particular lukewarmness that they had? He said, because thou says, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with thy salves that thou mayest see. Three things. He admonished them on. One, buy of me gold. Because that particular city, Laodicea, was actually rich in gold. In fact, it was at a junction, the crossing of a major road coming from the east going to the west, another major road coming from the south going to the north. Uh, 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 that was the center where those roads met. So it was the center of commerce. And gold was found in that particular place. And they produced a kind of wool. And that wool was used to make clothes. You wove it into uh, fabrics and so forth. So they were rich in that. It was, one was the source. Source number one, gold of their wealth. Number two was this particular weaving, which they did, which was very expensive and it made a lot of money. And it was regarded as a medical center. They had a kind of thing they call salves, which was produced in that place. You use it to cure eye problem. And they developed into some medical center at that place. And so they prided themselves in that. While the people in the city were running after that, the so-called believers also joined them in the pursuit of gold, in the pursuit of the wool, and in the pursuit of these eye salves. And that's the reason why the Lord used that, to talk to them and say, look, you need to buy of me. And you know when you want to buy something, eh? you give up something to be able to get something. Except that what you are giving up, you are not going to prefer that thing above what you are wanting to get. That's you go to the market, you want to buy something, you are putting your money out. You love your money. You need that money. But the thing you want, which you want to pay with for your money, you value it more than the money that you are going to give out. So you weigh the options. You look at the window, you see the price, you see the item, you say, no, I think I like that particular thing. I love it more than the amount of money they are asking for. So I'm ready to part with this money in order to get that. And that's exactly what the Lord was telling them. That's the cure, the thing that needed to be done if they were going to sort out the problem is that you buy of me gold tried in the fire. That gold, they, of course, uh, you are aware of the fact that it's not talking of physical gold. It's now valuing the things of God, which these people detested, which caused the lukewarmness, which the lukewarmness they entered into made them now to abhor, is making them to understand that there is treasure in what you have cast off. And because you cast that thing off, that's what led you to your situation of lukewarmness, that there is actually nothing to commend in you. And those people were so blinded to the point that they didn't see their nakedness. They didn't see their spiritual wretchedness. And so the Lord was telling them, you need to come to me and you must give up something to be able to get this gold that is tried in fire. And that's basically what it is. If you don't value spiritual life. You don't value 
zeal, enthusiasm in serving the Lord and in following Christ and in worshiping the Lord and in living for the Lord. If you don't value it, you won't see anything good in it. But if you are going to get it, because that is the real thing, when all said and done and we leave this particular world, what will matter will be what did you do with your soul? How did you prepare your soul? What did you do for Christ? That's why the songwriter puts it that way. He says, only what is done for Christ will last. All that you are working for in this particular world, the things you are chasing after, the gold, the silver, all of that, we are leaving all of them behind. The day you depart from this particular world, you will go with your soul. Are you preparing that soul for eternity? Or it is bankrupt spiritually. And that's why he was telling them, you buy of me gold tried in fire, the one that will go beyond this particular world. And then not only gold tried in fire, he told them, in fact, he made it clear, he said, you are actually wretched and you are miserable spiritually and you are poor and you are blind. At the same time, you are naked. You are chasing this fabric to beautify yourself and cover your nakedness. But spiritually, you are naked. And you are running after this particular eye sounds. But spiritually, you are blind. That's why you are diff indifferent when it comes to the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So these people, he explained to them and counseled them. Uh, he said, buy of me gold tried in the fire. And then, not only that, that thou mayest be rich, rich in things pertaining to the kingdom of God, rich in the eyes of God, rich spiritually. The only way you can be rich spiritually is for you to give up, give up certain things in order to buy the wealth that belongs to the kingdom of God. And white raiment, and that white raiment you cannot get it, is the righteousness of the saints. That was missing in their lives. The revelation tells us that. It says, the white raiment is the righteousness of the saints. And without that righteousness, you will not be able to please God. So white raiment, that, they are, they are, that thou may be clothed, and the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And then anoint thy eyes with eye salves so that you'll be able to see. You are blinded spiritually. And that blindness is there in the lives of the people who are, they go to church, but they are blind spiritually. That's the reason why you have to push them to attend to the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Ask them about having quiet time, reading the word of God, praying. Praying, they are dragging their feet. Studying the Bible, they are dragging their feet. Why? Because they are blinded spiritually. They are not seeing beyond their nose. They are only seeing around the physical things, the natural things. They do not recognize the wealth invested in the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And that because these things are missing, that's the reason why there was nothing to comment in their lives. And he says, as many as I love, I rebuke. So he was correcting them, not because he doesn't love them, and that's the problem we have sometimes. When you correct some people, they think, no, they are not showing love. And what they mean by showing love is that everything should be allowed, everything accommodated. It doesn't matter how they are behaving, how they are living spiritually, just allow them to live the way they are living. It doesn't work like that. There must be correction. That's the reason why in verse 20, he, say, he told them, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. Do you understand the implication of that? That's a church where he himself should be at the center, should be in the midst of them. He said, I'm actually at the door. I'm outside. Your behavior, your conduct, your relationship with me has kept me outside. You are not considering, and I'm knocking. And the fact that I'm knocking if anybody will hear my voice, so it's an individual business now. It's not a question of, no, I go to deeper life or I belong to a, a gospel church. You know, your own relationship with God, what is it like? What's your affection, your interest in the things pertaining to God? How do we compare that with your interest in the things pertaining to the Lord? How is your zeal when it comes to Reading the word of God, obedience to the Lord and prayer, seeking the face of God and service in the kingdom of God. How do we compare it with your involvement 
in the things of God, in, in the things of the world, and in the kingdom of the world? Is it not that your affection and your devotion for the things pertaining to the kingdom of this world, the secular, is more fiery than in the kingdom of God? Things pertaining, to, in fact, nobody can, we, we don't know where to put you. That's what the Lord is saying to these people. You are not hot. You're also not cold. I don't know where, where, where do we put you. If we say, okay, a person who is born again, you even know it yourself that you are really not, you don't fit in that category. Of a person that they will say, the person is actually born again. And the fact that you go to church, you even have a Bible, you read Bible, you have daily manna, and you have hymn book and so forth, it becomes difficult for us to say you are totally cold spiritually because you have a form of godliness, but you deny the power of godliness. That power of godliness has not worked in your life. And as a result, you've kept Christ outside and is knocking, saying, if anybody will hear my voice and open the door, he said, I will come into the person, I will sup with him, and he with me. May the almighty God give grace to everyone to be able to retrace their steps and be zealous in serving the Lord. Let's rise up on our feet as we pray.